Let's read this out loud in unison. Ready? Halaos hakathemenos en skate fos aden mega. All right. So um, give us a translation as much as you can, and we'll help you. So, Drana, did you want to? Oh, no, no. Oh, uh, Ian, you were the one who asked for this. So go ahead. What do you got? Yeah. What's ha la as? Yeah. What's ha? It's, um, it's well, no, no. Just, just this, this uh, word here, the article. Yeah. So, how would you translate ha la as? Yeah, the people. Okay, good. And then I have another article and kathemanas. Article, noun, article, something. What kind of position is that? Article, noun, article, modifier. Isn't that an attributive position? The man, the good, is the good man, right? You guys remember your attributive positions? First attributive is when the article is followed by the adjective and then the noun, right? So article, um, adjective, noun. We just did this a little while ago. Ha, kalas, uh, we'll say lagas here, shorter. And then second attributive position means the adjective second. It's article, noun, article, adjective. Ha, lagas. Ha, kalas. Okay, so see what I got? Ha, laas, ha, kathe, manas. This is an attributive use of something. See the meno, mene here? What kind of word is that? It's a participle, isn't it? Yeah? Okay, good. Um, now, is it passive? Depends on how you view this verb, right? Uh, what's the lexical form of kathemenos? Real quickly, because we got to go. Ka, the, my. Okay, that's one of your, your vocab words. It's a middle only form in the present. So when I see that menos, I might be thinking it's passive, but this means to sit. Okay, and I'm going to translate it as sitting. The people, the sitting. And skate? What's that? In darkness. Okay. This whole thing is functioning as a single constituent. The people, the sitting, and darkness. How would you translate that in better, better English? The people sitting in darkness, or the people who are sitting in darkness, or the people who were sitting in darkness. Depends on, on your context. And then that's going to be the subject. It's nominative case. What did they do? My verbs here. Aiden, they saw, right? Fos, how's that functioning? That's my direct object. It's accusative, singular, neuter, and so it's neuter and nominative form are identical. Saw a light, and then mega is a also accusative, singular, neuter. All right? So it's modifying fos. So the people sitting in darkness saw a mega fos, a great light. Okay? Go ahead. Question on number four. Yeah, so that's a good question. So look at the look at what we've got here. I've got ha pistusas, which is clearly an aorist participle. We've got that sa the new tau has dropped out before the sigma, right? So um, this is a future passive indicative verb. So someone will be saved. This has not yet happened, right? This is future. But the substantival participles, I've got two participles here that are substantival, the believing one and the bap being baptized one will be saved. This is one of those clear examples where a participle being aorist, both of these are aorist, 
participles does not mean that the time is past. Okay? The time issue is, uh, is, is relative if, if time is involved at all. So what's, what's the kernel of the semantics of the aorist participle? It's the aspect issue. Okay? What's being portrayed is an action viewed as having been complete. So the one who believes and the one who comes to faith might be a, another way to translate that, and the one who is baptized. That is to say, you, you're viewing the action as a completed action, okay, or portraying it as such. So someone who believes in the Lord and has undergone baptism will be saved, okay? So that's, uh, so, so these are, uh, in terms of, of aspect, perfective, but still future, given that the main verb is future, all right? So yeah, I would translate it as the one who believes. The one who believes. All right. Any others? So looking at number eight real quickly, I have hoi de idantes, hoi de idantes. Uh, the de, of course, is a post-positive conjunction that will be translated outside of the, uh, the clause, now, but, and. Uh, hoi idantes goes together. Now, this is a participle. You see the new tau. It's nominative, nominative plural, right? You see the hoi and the uh, third declension nominative plural case ending here. So <clears throat> this, is, uh, this is functioning as a substantival participle, and we might translate this as those who saw, okay? From Adon, I saw, um, those who saw him at the sea walking, or walking on the sea, okay? So those who saw him walking on the sea, what did they do? This is nominative. It's the subject, right? And here's my verb, edoxon. This is not doxadzo, which means um, to, uh, to, to glorify, but uh, thought, okay? Thought that phantasma estim, thought that he was a ghost, okay? So this is an aorist verb. The ones who... And this is the, uh, the, the aorist participle, okay, the ones who saw him thought. Which one of these things happens first and which one happens uh, second? Does the seeing happen first or does the thinking that he was a ghost happen first? The seeing, okay. So you can see how this aorist participle, in terms of relative uh, time frame, occurs before the main verb, right? Let's read number six together out loud in unison. Ready? Kai erkantai ferantes pras autan paralutikan i ramanan hupa tesaron. All right. So, um, what does kai erkantai mean? Okay. Uh, is the mm tai a he or a they? That's that's third plural, isn't it? So third plural. So it's they, and then um, uh, we don't have any context here, but probably uh, this is what what's often uh, referred to as a historical present. So it's a present tense form, but but in a past time context. So you could probably translate this as they came. All right. Now, ferantes, what kind of a verb form is that? It is a participle. How do you know that? The new tau. The new tau. Good. Have we seen enough new tau's to last a lifetime here? Not yet. You haven't read enough. Okay. And then the epsilon sigma at the end is a case ending for which person gender number? Okay. So it's nominative 
plural and it's got to be masculine. This one is one that cannot be neuter. Why not? What's the neuter plural nominative case ending? Third declension. Ah, alpha. That's right. That's right. So, um, and then fair run tests, which, uh, which tense stem is this? What's the lexical form of this verb? It's pharaoh. That's right. So, you would say that this is which, uh, which tense stem? The present stem. Absolutely. Okay. So, um, now is this participle that we're looking at, uh, is it a, uh, an uh, adjectival or an adverbial function? Yeah, this appears to be adverbial. Now, if I had an article, it would have to be what? It'd have to be adjectival, right? Remember, articular participles are always adjectival. And arthrous participles are usually adverbial, but not exclusively adverbial. So sometimes they, they could be adjectival. But here, it seems to be indicating the way that the, the coming happened. They came in this manner. What manner? What's Pharaoh mean? Yeah, carry, to carry. So they came carrying pros alton to him. Uh, we don't know who that is, but my guess would be Jesus, right? If you don't know the answer, there's always three answers that could be right. Jesus, world, peace, and bacon. Okay? So if there's ever a question you don't know the answer to, if you say one of those, it's probably right. Jesus, world, peace, and bacon. Well, now, then that's the trifecta, right? Okay, so, and, and so they, they came to him, or they came ca carrying uh, to him, and then paralutikon, easy, right? Uh, a paralytic. And then I, Ramanan, hupa, tesaron. What's that? Okay, this is a participle. That's right. You see the menomene form here, though, right? So that's not the new tau form. So what kind of participle might this be? Yeah, this is a middle passive one. Now, we have hupa tesaron. I have a middle passive form with a hupa and a genitive case ending. So would, do you think this would be a, a real middle or a real passive? Yeah, this is probably a real passive here because this would be translated as by indicating the agent of the the passive action so um let's uh let's think about this new here for just a minute as well uh menomene is our passive participle what case gender number do you think this is so passive participle okay so accusative singular what masculine and technically this could be neuter as well couldn't it all right, now look over here. We have a new right there. What do you think that might uh, indicate? What case gender number? Yeah, this is probably accusative, singular, and masculine. Why is it accusative, do you think? Why did the writer choose an, an accusative noun? It is. It seems to be the object of something. What, though? Is it the object of Erkantai? Does Erkantai take an object? No. It's not transitive. It doesn't take a direct object. What about Pharaoh? Yes, yes. Pharaoh is a transitive verb the kind of verb that takes a direct object, right? So, can participles have direct objects? Yes, they can, can't they? So, carrying a paralytic prosaltan to him, meaning to Jesus. So, there's two different participants here. So, here, here's just a little review. Why is altan in the accusative case? 
That's accusative singular and masculine as well. That's right, because the preposition pros takes its object in the accusative case. But paralutikon is accusative not because a preposition requires it, but because it's the object of a participle, a verb. Okay, so carrying this direct object to this object of the preposition, carrying a paralytic to him. Now, uh, if we take this then as an accusative, singular, masculine noun, then I have a participle that agrees with it, apparently in case, gender, and number, right? So probably don't want to go with neuter here. I want to go with masculine. All right. Now, what's the lexical form of this verb? Iro, yes, Iro. What does Iro mean? To raise up or, yeah, taken up, lifted, okay? Or, or actually, when it's active, to, to carry, take up, lift. So, so here it's passive, though. So a paralytic, how would you translate this? It's a present stem, right? It's using the ir stem of the lexical form. So it's a present stem, passive participle. Yeah, it could be being carried or being lifted by for. Okay? So let me ask you now, what kind of participle is this? Is this adverbial or is it adjectival? Okay, but there's no article in front. It must be adverbial, right? Doesn't, doesn't have to be. Okay, now, why wouldn't it have an article in front of it, even if it is adjectival? Paralytic is indefinite. It's anarthrous, right? There's no article here. So I wouldn't expect an adjectival participle to be articular if the noun it modifies is not articular, okay? So if it had been tan paralutikon, then I would expect iramanon to have a, a ton in front of it. The paralytic, the being carried, meaning the being carried paralytic, okay? But here it's a paralytic being carried, okay? Now, if you wanted to insist that this were an adverbial participle, that's not an impossibility here either but then the focus would be something like the temporal notion, carrying to him a paralytic while the paralytic was being lifted by four. It seems to me, though, that the focus is not on the timing of this as much as the identity of the paralytic, right? What kind, what, what is it about the paralytic that, that, that the writer's trying to get across? He was a paralytic who had four friends carrying him, right? That, that's, that's the idea. So I, I would go with an adjectival use as well. I agree with you there. Okay. I don't remember who asked for that, but is that, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Right, 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 right. Mm hmm yes. Sort of like in Sesame Street, right? Numbers can do things. Four carried him. <laughs> there, there, there's an old joke about, um, well, it's, it's, it's a Star Wars joke. I mean, why was the number five afraid of the number six, Yoda asked? Because six, seven, eight. Get it? So. Six, eight, seven, right? The number six, eight, the number seven. The six, seven, eight. Okay. All right. Let's read number 10 together uh, again in unison. Hate de epistusan to Filippo evangelizameno peri Tes basileas tu theu, kai tu anamatas, Jesu Christu, 
e baptizanta Andres te kai gunaikis. All right. What hate mean? When. And then the post-positive conjunction day comes next in Greek. We'll, uh, we'll stick it on the outside in our translation. Now, but, when, epistusan, they believed. Why do you say they believed? Yeah, that's right. I have the augment and the sigma alpha of the heiress, and that's a third plural secondary active ending, right? So when they believe to Filippo, who's that? Philip. Okay, so when they believe Philip. And then euangelizameno. What kind of a verb form is that? It is a participle, isn't it? There's the meno mene. What's the iota subscript telling us? This is dative. Okay, good. Dative, singular, and masculine. Could that be neuter? Yes. Remember, masculine and neuter uh, third declension forms are identical to each other in, in, in terms of their ending. All right. Why, why is this verb using the meno mene ending? Because, yeah, this is a middle only form in the present stem, isn't it? The lexical form is euang. Actually, it's not. It's not strictly speaking. You do see it in the in the active, but almost always in the New Testament, it's middle. Euangelizo. Oops. And quite frankly, a mine. All right. So we don't want to try to translate this as passive. It means preaching, heralding, good newsing. Now, uh, here's the question. That date of singular masculine matches this, doesn't it? So, is this an adjectival or an adverbial participle here? Okay, so we have one vote for adjectival. What's it modifying if it's adjectival? Philip, all right. Now, uh, is Philip articular? Yes. If this is an attributive adjectival function, then it should be an attributive position. Is this an attributive position? No. Remember, attributive position is when the noun is definite, the attributive adjective or participle will have the article before it. So if I sandwiched the participle between the toe and the Filippo, that would be attributive, first attributive position. If I had another toe article, to Filippo, to Ewangelizameno, that would be attributive. But this is actually in a predicate position, isn't it? Or it's actually technically not a predicate position because I don't, I don't take this as an adjectival function. This actually is adverbial, okay? And the idea here is, is not that it's telling you something sort of indispensable about Philip, like the Philip evangelizing as opposed to the other, other Philip over there playing golf, but when they believe Philip while evangelizing, meaning while he, Philip, was evangelizing. That's why the case gender number matches Philip Filippo here, right? While he was evangelizing or preaching the good news, Parites Bastileas to Theu. What's that mean? Con concerning the kingdom of God. Kai to Anamatas Yesu Christu. And, yeah, this is continuing the object of the preposition Pari. Pari plus one genitive noun and another genitive noun concerning this and that, right? So concerning the kingdom and the name of Jesus Christ. Now, all of this is part of the hate clause. When they did this, what happened? E baptizanta. 
Yeah, they were baptized. Now, what tense is this? I've got an augment here. What are my two possibilities? Okay, good. It could be aorist or imperfect, right? Which one is it? All right. Imperfect. Why not aorist? That's right. We're using the present tense stem, baptids, right? The verb is baptizo. If it were aorist, what do you think the form might look like? Yeah, it'd be e ba te sa and then we'd add the n ta there. Okay, that'd be the middle. The aorist middle, aorist passive would be e ba tis the san. Okay? In other words, here, here here's this is the the, the bottom line. The aorist is not a second aorist here, okay? And so you would expect the tense formatives of the aorist that you need, need to know. Um, so over here, we just have the present stem with the secondary augment and middle passive endings. Now, is this a, uh, a true middle, or do you think this is a, a true passive meaning of baptizo? The subject's third plural, right? So it's a true passive, imperfect passive indicative, third plural. Okay, Andres and Gunaikes is what case? Nominative plural, and one's masculine, one's feminine, right? So if it were middle, it would be saying, and the men and women were baptizing. Right, that's not what we're getting here. It's men and women were being baptized. Okay, so that's why I'm saying that this is this should be understood as a as a true passive, even though the middle and passive are indistinguishable from each other. All right. Now, uh, the te here is uh, is uh, a a post positive form that uh, you usually want to translate uh, before the noun that it follows and. Or, or you could translate this as both men and women were being baptized. Okay? So there you go. Joanna, were you going to ask about that? Who? Yeah, the T is confusing. Yeah. And then Mount had they were being baptized, comma, both men and women. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It just seems unnecessary. Yeah. 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 Um,. Yeah, I would take either one as a, as a as a as a way of translating it, but um, I I do take the 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 subject to be Andres and Gunaikas. Yeah. Uh huh. All right. Other questions. All right. So let's look at uh, uh, Cloud Nine here, and uh, we'll read it real quickly. Ready? Had de Hamanas. Everybody, together, ready? One, two, three. Ha dechamenas humas eme dechatai kai ha eme dechamenas dechatai tan apastelantame ha dechamenas prophetain es anama prophetu misthan prophetu limpsatai kai ha dechamenas Dikayan, es anama dikayu, misthan dikayu, lamesatai. Now, this is a little bit complicated, but it's fun, isn't it? Sure. Humor me. We have hadahamanas. So, you see the meno, mene form here, right? So, you know, this must be a participle. Is it active, middle, passive? Meno mene is for what voice? Okay, so for now we'll say middle and passive. Now, remember, if it's a present stem participle, then middle and passive are the same. If it's an aorist stem participle, the middle and the passives are always different, right? So we're going to have to settle that here in just a moment. 
But let's determine what the uh, gender uh, number case is. We had a sigma here after the meno. That Omicron tells me it is what declension pattern? The Omicron here before the case ending. That second declension. And which genders are typically second declension? Masculine and neuter. When I have a sigma, it must be what gender? Masculine. It's got to be nominative, singular, masculine, right? All right, now, what is the lexical form of this verb? If I strip off the menomene, the case ending, and the uh, connecting vowel, I'm left with deck. Do we have any verbs that have a deck part? Decami. Do you guys remember decami? What's decami mean? To take or receive. That's right. That's right. And so uh, what stem are we seeing here? That's the present stem, isn't it? So it's a present, middle, or passive participle, nominative, singular, masculine. What is in front of decaminus? Right here. That's an article. If that's an article, this participle must be what type? Adverbial or adjectival? What's that? If there's an article. Is she right? Yes. Come on, everybody. Sin boldly here. <laughs> okay? If there's an article in front of the participle, it is adjectival, always and forever. Amen. If it's missing the article, you got to wonder. Okay? If there's an article, it is adjectival through and through. Now, what are my sorts of adjectival? What are my sorts of adjectival par participles? That's the question, right? They can be attributive. Predicative, substantival. Which is it here? It's substantival. It's not attributive because there's not a corresponding noun that it agrees with in case, gender, and number. It's not ha decaminas anthropos or ha anthropos ha decaminas. It's just the common us. Nothing else. Okay. How do I know it's not a predicate use? What can you tell me about predicate adjectives and participles? They are anarthrous. They don't take the article if they're predicate uses. And this one has it. So my, my last choice is that it's substantival. By the way, predicate adjectives will, will occur with the verb to be. Something, something is Whatever the adjective or participle is, that's a predicate use. Uh, but, but here, my main verb is decatai, which is coming up. So this is a substantival use, and that means that the participle is functioning like a noun. The receiving one. The one who receives. He who receives. Those are ways to translate this. Um, well, what role does humas have? That's right. It's the direct object of the commonos. So that tells me that this would be what? Middle or passive participle? It would be middle because passive would be the one being received. And you wouldn't have a direct object if it's a passive, a truly passive idea, right? So middle participles could take, and middle verbs could take direct objects. So it's, it's middle. Sorry, my handwriting is not too great here today. I'll just erase all that. So it's a present and middle participle. Uh, so the one receiving you, and again, if it's substantival, it's functioning like a noun. What noun role would it have if it's nominative? It would be the subject, right? And so the one receiving you, or the one who receives you, decatai, what's that? Receives, third singular, is the ending, right? Because ha is masculine singular. The one who receives you receives, and ma is me, which is another direct object. But this direct object is the direct object of the main verb. 
right? This direct object is the direct object of the participle. You got to keep those straight, okay? Whenever you have verbal forms, main verbs, participles, uh, and when you have subordinate clauses, the verbs will have their own objects if they're transitive. They will have their own prepositional phrases that might modify those verbs. You got to keep those things with the right verb. This direct object goes with that, that, uh, and uh, this, uh, this direct object goes with this one. Okay? Now, we're going to see this principle throughout the rest of this, uh, this verse, or set of verses. I don't know how many verses this is. Okay, so the one who receives me, excuse me, receives you, receives me. Kai ha eme dekamanos. You see how we have ha dekamanos together? Same thing here, right? The one who receives, the receiver. He who receives, and my direct object is the direct object of the participle. The one who receives me, that's what kind of a participle? Is it adjectival or adverbial? It's adjectival. has the article with it, right? Which adjectival function is it? It's substantival. Okay, the receiving me one, what about him? He's functioning as a subject again. The one who receives me decatize. What's that? Receives. And look at what I have next. Tan apostelantame. What kind of a verb form is apostelanta? It's a participle. There's my new tau, right? You guys all see that? Okay. The alpha here tells me that it could be what? What case gender number? Nominative, accusative, plural, neuter. That's one possibility. And the other one is accusative, masculine, singular. Okay? Now, look at the ton. The ton is right before it. Articles are your friend. They often help you parse things when you are maybe a little confused by the third declension form that the article might be accompanying. What case gender number is ton? It's accusative singular masculine. Okay, so uh, we're going to go with this, this parsing and, and not this one. This participle has an article in front of it. So is it adverbial or adjectival? Okay, only one person said adjectival. Come on, you bold sinners, wake up. What kind of participle is this? It is adjectival. There's an article in front of it and agrees it is adjectival. What kind of adjectival? It's another substantival adjectival. All right? So the one who receives me receives the, the one who sent me, the sending me one. Now, the stem of this participle is which stem? Present or aorist? Look carefully at it. Apostelanta. Is that using the present stem? No, nope, it's got one lambda, right? So this is the aorist, active, participle. So, this will become a matter of relative time then, the one who sent me, okay? <clears throat> In other words, you're receiving me, but behind me is one who sent me to you so that you might receive me. All right, and then ha de kamenos, there's the same form, substantival, adjectival participle, the one who receives Prophetain, what's that? A prophet, eis anama prophetu. Yes, yes. So he, the one who receives a prophet in a prophet's name, or in the name of a prophet. We're, we still haven't gotten to the main verb, right? It's coming. Lame satai. What's that? Will receive. This is from. Lambano. What form of Lambano is this? It's the future middle indicative. Third singular. Will receive. 
And then the direct object of lambano is fronted. We'll receive a reward of a profit or a profit's reward. Okay? And hadekamanas dikayan, what's that? The one who receives a righteous person. Now what? This is an adjective. Technically, that's an adjective. How is that adjective functioning? It is substantival. So he who receives a righteous person, a righteous one, es anama dikayu, in the name of a righteous one, misthan dikayu, dikayu lamesatai. There's my verb again over here, right? That, that kind of person receive, will receive misthan dikayu, direct object. A righteous one's reward. All right? So lots of substantival things. Participles, adjectives. It's awesome. Okay? Love it. All right. We all good? I should put this one on your quiz, right? Come on, you do great. All right. Okay, let's look real quickly at number one. Blepe Tanye Soon, probably historical present. He saw Jesus, right? Or is this Jesus saw? Uh, he saw Jesus because Jesus is accusative case. He saw Jesus er kamenon. Okay, he saw Jesus coming pros altan to him, kai lege, and said, both of these are historical presents here, I would uh, venture to, to say, ide ha amnas, behold the lamb, tutheu of God, Ha iron. What kind of verb is iron? It's a participle. What is in front of this participle? An article. You tell me, is that adverbial or adjectival? Adjectival. Thank you. What sort of adjectival is it? Is it attributive, predicative, or substantival? Ah, is it? Are you sure? Yes. I have ha, noun, ha, participle. The lamb, the iron. Isn't that an attributive position? Yeah? Yeah? You see that? Right? That participle has an article. And both of them agree with ha'amnas, the lamb, the lamb, the iron. What does iron mean? To, to, to raise up or to take up, take away is also a way to translate this. Behold the lamb of God, the taking away, tain hamartian, the sin to cosmu the world. Uh, why is this accusative? Because it's the direct object of the participle. Okay? Participles can take direct objects. So you could translate it as behold the carrying away the sin of the world lamb of God. That lamb. Or be better, behold the lamb of God who takes away or is taking away the sin of the world. All right? But this is a, an adjectival participle for sure. All right. And you could parse that, couldn't you? With that own ending. Nominative, singular, masculine, just like luon, present, active, participle. Okay. Seven. All right. So number seven. Let's, um, let's see. I have ha echoon. What does that mean? Ha echoon. What's, what's this verb from? What's the lexical form? Echo. 
but you see the ending's own. Yeah, having. It's a participle, but it's got the article ha in front of it, so it's the the one having or the haver. <laughs> There's the havers and the havers not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the one having, and you could also translate it as the one who has or he who has, right? Tasentolasmu. What's entele? Okay, yes. So this is laws or commandments. Uh, look at the case. I have tas and talas. So is this, it's accusative, feminine, and what number? Singular or plural? That's plural, okay? So he who has my commandments. Now, here, what's the sense of having? Yeah, yeah. So so the idea is is, is, is having by way of keeping, right? So he who, uh, who, who, who has or holds to my commandments and teron altas and who keeps, it's the same own ending, right? And who keeps them, akenos, remember which demonstrative that is? That's the far one. So we'll translate this how? That. So here's the deal with this. This participial expression is with the article in front and no nominative masculine singular noun that it agrees with. Which adjectival use is this? It's substantival. And it's stuck at the front to announce the topic, okay? He who has my commandments and keeps them. What about that person? That one, so this is referring backwards to who he's talking about, but he now uses this as the subject, okay? It's like saying, my mother, she loves me, <laughs> right? Your mama, she better love you. And here, the one who keeps, that one is ha-agaponme, the, the one who loves me, the me lover. The loving me one. This is another participle. There's the own ending. Notice I have an article in front of it. It's this adverbial or adjectival. It's adjectival. Okay. Which adjectival use is this? It's substantival again. So what I'm saying is someone is something, right? So I've got a subject. I have a copular verb. And I have a predicate nominative here, and that's what my participle is functioning as. So that one is the loving me one, the one who loves me. And we have another substantival participle, and the one who loves me, same expression here, agape thesitai. What verbal form is that? Are we... Are we going to be tricked by the theta, eta here? Is that an aorist passive verb? What do I see? Ah, it's not just theta, eta, is it? It's theta, eta, sigma. Which tense is that? That's future passive. Remember that? The theta, eta sure looks like aorist passive. Theta, eta sigma, future passive. Tie ending. Is that a primary or a secondary ending? That's secondary, is it? I mean, sorry, that's primary. Yes, it's middle passive, but primary. And, and future tense uses which one? The primary or the secondary tenses? The primary. Okay, so... This is uh, third singular. Why is it third singular? Because this is the subject, right? That whole participle is functioning as the subject. The one who loves me will make it passive from agapao, will be loved. Hupa plus the genitive tells me the agent of the passive verb will be loved by my father. Kago 
What's that mean? And I, this is Kai and Ego together, and I, Agapeso Altan, I will love him. This is future but not passive. It's future active indicative, right? And then the omega is for singular. Okay, so he's uh, got some indicative verb forms in here along with the participles. And we put it all together, we have a really amazing statement that the Father will love. The one who loves me will be loved by the Father. And Jesus says, I will love him too. Okay? <coughs> Any other questions on translation homework? Number four. All right. Just get rid of that. Okay. So I have hapistusas kai baptistes so thesatai. Um, look at pistusas here. Is is that a participle? Can we tell? Yeah, we have sauce. Does that look like one of the participial endings we've seen? Yeah, we have sauce, santas, sasa, sases, right? So pistu plus sauce looks like an aorist active participle. And it would have been sans, but what happened to the new tau before the sigma? It falls out, right? So, uh, this is what case gender number then? Nominative, singular, masculine, right? And look what it's preceded by. Is that the same case? It is. So, these are both in agreement. So, that means that this must be what kind of participle? Adverbial or adjectival? It's adjectival. Yeah, that's what you meant, huh? <laughs> yeah, because it's articular, right? You can't have an adverbial one and have the article in front of it. So, uh, which adjectival uses it? Is there a nominative singular masculine noun that this accompanies and agrees with? No. So, it must be functioning as the noun, right? So, it's a substantival use. So, it's he, who, what? Yes, he who believes. Now look, this is an aorist participle. Does that mean that I have to translate it as a past tense form? Do I have to say he who believed? Past. No. It's aorist, which means not that the time of the verbal action is past, but that the aorist tense form is used for its aspect value. It's portraying the action as a... Uh, as a bounded whole, he who believes, not he who is believing, just he who believes. So, he who believes, maybe something like uh, the situation could be he who comes to faith, right? But the, the, the timing of this is actually related to the main verb, which is going to be this, so thesatai. What tense is that? Theta, eta, sigma. That is future passive, indicative, right? So somebody will be saved. Who will be saved? The one who believes, okay? And, baptistes, there's another participle that goes with the ha. And is baptized. So this is... Um, See the theta epsilon, right? That's aorist passive participle. Same case gender number, though, right? So both of these are portraying the actions of believing and being baptized as, as the complete or the, the whole action. Somebody who, who does that, whatever the time frame, will be saved, right? So don't... Don't make the mistake of assuming that because these are aorist 
tense stems that they have to be past time because we're using participles here. Okay? All right. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, let's look at three here. So, kai ha the aron eme, and the, what's this verb? To see, right, theorao. Do you see the own ending here? So, what, is that a participle? Okay, um, it, it could be a second aorist, but uh, what's the lexical form? It's theo-reo, okay? So the present stem uses theo re and when I add the omicron for the connecting vowel, and then the new tau, and for the uh, present active stem, this is going to become what? It's going to become own, right? And the epsilon omega is going to contract and become that. So I'm going to, um, I'm, I'm not going to want to assume this is a second aorist. Now, how would I know for sure? You can look at your lex lexicon and look for the aorist form and, and guess what it'll be? It'll be e, the, o, re, sa. Okay, it'll actually use a first aorist, and I have a sigma alpha to, to uh, tell me that it's an aorist participle if I had one. Okay, so this is just a present active participle, nominative masculine singular. So the one who sees, the one who sees who? M.A. is who? Who is that? Me. The one who sees me, this whole thing is functioning how? It's the subject of this verb. So it's the article tells me it's adjectival. The fact that I don't have a nominative noun that it agrees with tells me it's functioning as the noun. It's a substantival use. So the one who sees me does what? Theore sees. It's a present active indicative, third singular. The one who sees me sees, and I have... Tan pem santame. This is another participle. Looking here, is that aorist? Yeah. Can you see the sigma? Yeah. Tiding in the psi, right? That's psa santa. Okay. So this is an aorist. New tau. Active participle, right? So the one who sees me sees the the one who sent me. That's right. The one who sent me. Here the aorist is uh, being used because the action of sending is viewed as complete. The whole the whole thing, right? It's looking at the the whole action as as a bounded whole. Um, and since in the context, that's already happened. Uh, contextually, we know that we can translate that as a past time, right? Somebody sent Jesus, and the one who now sees me sees the one who sent me to be seen, okay? So uh, there's another substantival participle. This one's acting as the direct object, and that's why it's accusative case, right? You see the accusative case endings here. Accusative, singular, and masculine. Let's look at number five here real quickly. Number five. We have peripatone de paratain thalasan tes galilayas Aden dua Adelphus Simona ton legomenon Petron Kai Andrean ton Adelfonautu Balantas Amphiblistron Ace Tain 
Thalassan. All right, what do we have here? Well, we have peripatone from peripatao. Notice that I have the own ending. There is a tau missing from the new tau participle, walking. This is using the present stem. So uh, now, walking, or and, walking, para tain thalasan tes galileas. Walking along the Sea of Galilee. Now, this uh, new without the tau, this is characteristic of the present active participle nominative masculine singular. Okay? So we're looking for something nominative and singular and masculine that would be the doer of the walking. Now I have Aden Dua Adelphus. Uh, that's accusative plural masculine. And uh, so there is a, a subject here of Aden. He saw. It, there's no subject pronoun. But if there were, it would be nominative singular and uh, presumably masculine, feminine, or neuter. Uh, masculine uh, usually is the subject in, in biblical text. And so this, uh, this walker is the one who also is the seer. So, while walking along the Sea of Galilee, he, the one walking, saw, and then my direct objects here, two brothers. Two brothers. Now, the brothers are stated here, Simona and Andreon, and the direct object again is brothers. These nouns are in apposition to brothers, and they restate the identity of the brothers, and because they're in apposition, they will share the same case. That is, Simona has to be accusative, uh, as brothers is, and Andreon would be accusative case as well. Uh, so, so you saw two brothers in apposition. The noun that's in apposition to the anchor word uh, is basically trying to fill the same function slot. And that's why they'll share the same case and they will be the same reference. They will refer to the same people as the word in which they're in apposition. So we have these all two brothers, Simon and Andre, and now each of them is going to be further qualified by another appositive, another noun in apposition. Simona, he saw two brothers, Simon, Tan Legamenon Petron. Now look at what we have here. We have a meno mene form. So that tells us that this is a middle or a passive participle. And I've got leg over here from the verb lego. A lego is a present stem. Legomenon then. This is present, middle, or passive participle. Notice that I've got the new ending that agrees with the ton, new ending here. Uh, these are accusative as well. Uh, why accusative? Because Simona is accusative and these are modifying Simona. Now, uh, the participle has an article in front of it, and that tells us that this cannot be an adverbial participle. Articular participles are adjectival, and if they are adjectival, they're either attributive or substantival. Uh, here, uh, I'm going to take this as a substantival participle uh, where this, uh, this participle is, uh, is functioning as a noun. And uh, you may say, yeah, but, but the word Peter here agrees with the participle in case, gender, and number, and the participles uh, smashed here uh, in between the, uh, the, uh, the article and the noun. And, and yes, that is true, but there's something that you have to know about the verb lego. I could have an expression where when the verb lego is active, I could say something like um, altas lege he calls uh, altan. Actually, here let me let me do a different form here. He calls uh, Simona. Petron. Okay, this will make it clear. All right, 
He calls Simon Peter. This is a verb that takes two objects uh, or two accusative nouns. Uh, Simon is the direct object accusative. And then what he calls Simon is also in the accusative case. He calls Simon Peter. That is, he names Simon Peter. Okay, you called me a fool. Uh, me is one object, an accusative fool is another. Now, if I want to make this passive, then Simona becomes the subject, right? So, Simone, uh, and then Legati is called... And then, guess what? This accusative noun drops down and stays accusative. Its accusative case is retained. Simone is called Petron. Okay? And this is what we have here. We have a participle that's middle passive. And in this case, uh, this is a truly passive, right? Simon is called. And uh, we have a truly passive participle. Uh, he called two brothers, Simon the called Peter, the one called Peter. It's accusative because it's uh, re restating who Simon is. And uh, again, I'm going to take this as a substantival participle, the one who is called, the called one. But called takes an accusative, um, a retained accusative object. Called what? the one called Peter, okay? So this is not modifying Peter in the, in the way that you would think about a participle uh, sandwich in between an article and a noun in the same case. Uh, this is rather a feature of this double accusative structure where the second accusative is retained. So Simon, the one called Peter, and Andrew, the brother of him. We have um, another a positive here. So again, a positives keep the case of the nouns to which they're anchored. That's why tan legomenon is accusative, because it's an apposition to Simona, the accusative noun there. All right, so he sees these guys, and then we have balantas, which is from the verb balo. So notice I have the same stem here, bal, bal, present participle, new tau, active, and then the alpha sigma, the os ending, is accusative, plural, and masculine. Uh, why is it accusative, plural, masculine? Because Adolphus is. Okay? So this, uh, the ones doing the throwing um, are, are the same as the brothers. So he saw two brothers casting nets. Um, this is what he saw the two brothers doing. I could say, I saw you eating ice cream, and I could see you casting nets. Uh, casting nets is not as fun as eating ice cream, but same kind of, of idea, all right? So the participles describing the people as they are seen, so in terms of what they're doing. So he saw two brothers, Simon and Andrew, casting a net into the sea, all right? So that is number five.